sama. Walaupun di Kediri pandemi COVID-19 cukup menghibat ya, Pak. Dan oh, okay. anggota kita, dosen dan karyawan ada yang kena dan akhirnya meninggal. Ya. I'm sorry for you, but... ya. <tuh> Jadi kita tetap berusaha untuk uh, menjalankan kegiatan sehari-hari termasuk hari ini ikut Belum masuk ya? Ya, semoga sampai di situ saja ya, Pak Rektor. Amin, amin. Dan diberikan amin. kesehatan ya. semuanya yang baru sakit cepat pulih amin. seperti sedia kala. Kami dari Unisvet amin. turut mendoakan. Bapak Rektor dan Bapak Direktur ini dari Unisvet juga Kemudian, hadir. Dan ya, yang lain amin. tetap selamat. Amin. Ya, amin. Dari Unisvet juga Tor, hadir. Dekan, selamat. Okay. Para selamat pagi juga. Pak Rektor. UPS Tegal, Pak Prof. Fahrudin. Prof. Fahrudin. Di Tegal apa di Semarang, Bu? Posisinya, Pak. UPS. Prof. Fahrudin. Kok lama? Mana? Kok masih di mute? Bu. Ya, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Ya, Pak Ibu, kita... Halo, Ahmed. Ahmed. Halo, Bu. Ya, ya okay. Bu. Ya, ya, ya. Uh, Pak Rido, di mute semuanya biar Ahmed bicara. Oke, okay. di mute, all all mute, hanya Ahmed. All mute, only Ahmed. Oke, okay. ya yeah. uh, Ahmed, we can start uh, today. Ya, yeah, oke. Okay. Now, ya, yeah. yeah. uh, Bapak Ibu, ya. Yeah. Ya, yeah, oke, okay, oke. Okay. Assalamualaikum, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, praise Allah, the Almighty, the most generous and the most merciful. So we can gather here today. Yeah. Welcome to join Summer Camp 2021 organized by Universitas Pitagan, STYE with the Gamma Luman Jung East Java, a Vet University, Kateri University. Salamat datang and took some and took summer and took a good summer camp 2021. Organized in the Universitas Manchester Kitigal, Kateri Universitas Kateri. Jawa Timur, Universitas Ibit Jawa Tingga, STYE with the Gamma Raman Jung, Jawa Timur. Bu, please, Bu Yoga. Bu. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ahmed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome our honorable speakers here. Mr. Juri Arlian Toro, PhD, Deputy Chief of Staff of the President of the Republic of Indonesia for Information and Political Communications. Mr. Yosef Bakil, Lecturer in Public Law and Political Science, University First, Hassan First, Morocco, and also, and also, uh, he's also the lecturer in Pancasakti University. Bapak Ibu yang tidak berkepentingan bisa di unmute ya. Yang tidak berkepentingan bisa di unmute. Terima kasih. Oke, okay. and I would like to welcome Miss Anita Andrea Sevskaya, student at Moscow City University Samara Russia, Dr. Dani Suleiman, editor in chief of South Asia Journal of Social Sciences and Humanities PhD and Universitas, I'm sorry, University Utara Malaysia, Mr. Uh, Ahmad Khalil Yakubi. International students at Universitas Indonesia from Afghanistan, and Ms. Han Mohammad Setki, international student from Egypt at Faculty of Economic and Business, Universitas Pancasakti Tegal. Welcome to our directors and directors of the Universitas Pancasakti Tegal, STYE with the Agama Aluman Jung East Java, Kadri University East Java, Evet University Central Java. Salamat datang. And took some more lecture than director, Universitas Manchester Tegal, STYE with the Agama Aluman Jung, Kateri University, Jawa Timur, Evet University, Jawa Tingga. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so happy to introduce myself as a moderator today. My name is Ahmed Muhammad Ibrahim. I am an international student of Faculty of Economy and Business, Universitas Manchester Tegal. Saya sangat senang. Antu Kenel Kanku, nama saya Ahmad, saya mahasiswa di Universitas Pancasakti Tegal, 
באוניברסיטת מצ'סוקיטה גל, פקלטי אוף אקונומי דן ביזנס. סליקן בו? Bapak Ibu Ahmed ini mahasiswa internasional di IPS Tegal. Beliau belajar S1 di Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis. Sekarang semester berapa Ahmed? So what are you semester in? Saya akan semester tiga. Oh, Ahmed sekarang semester tiga. Okay, nice to meet you, Bapa Ibu. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's commence by saying Basmalah Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I would like to start our international Uh, summer camp today by listening to the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise for the national anthem. Bapak Ibu silakan berdiri. Please raise for the national anthem of the Republic of Indonesia. Yes, wait a moment. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to the national anthem of Russia.
This is for the nation ism of India. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Utkada Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Utchala Jaladhita Ranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Ashish Mange Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Jana Gana Mangala Dayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Ladies and gentlemen, please raise for the national anthem of Afghanistan. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to the national anthem of Egypt.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Silahkan uh, duduk Bapak Ibu. Ahmed, are you there? Hello Ahmed. Ahmed. Ahmed, are you there? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our next agenda is welcoming speech delivered by Rector of Universitas Pancas Sakti Tegal, Professor Dr. Fahrudin MPD. Please do. Pak Rektor, monggo, welcoming speech-nya. Yes, yeah, well, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Pak Rektor. Monggo. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum The Honorable Deputy Ward President, Mr. Yuri Ardianto Isti. The Honorable Mr. Yosef Bakil, Hasan Fats University, Maroko. The Honorable Mrs. Miss Anita Adri Asi Pal Kai, Moscow. City University, Samara, Rusia. The Honorable Mr. Danis Suleiman, University Utara, Malaysia. The Honorable Mr. Ahmad Halil Yaqubi, Afghanistan, and Hal Muhammad Setki. The Honorable the Rector of Kediri University, Mr. Joko Raharjo MP, the Honorable the, the Rector of IFET Universitas Semarang, Mr. Rustono M. Hum, Professor, the Honorable Chairman of STIA Widya Gama Lumajang, Mrs. Dr. Ratna Wijayanti Daniel, MM, and Dr. Yoga Prihatin, MPD, and the Organizing Committee. They all are participants of International Virtual Summer Camp 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let us together express gratitude, blessing, and give of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can gather in this place in good health and without any so coming. In this very happy man morning, on behalf of Universitas Panca Sakti Tegal, I am Fahrudin, Rector of Universitas Panca Sakti Tegal, would like to welcome and congratulate all participants of International Virtual Summer 2021. This anniversary is held with the aim of providing some knowledge about the role of youth leadership with Panca Sila Rater. Get to know study about and global learning, role of youth or in political managing and economic development. International student relation, I mean, pandemic, fun writing on effective journal and getting and equip culture. I am proud to introduce you to to international student of Universitas Panca Sakti Tegal and. Muhammad Zedki and Ahmad Muhammad Ibrahim from Ekip as the moderator. Universitas Pancasak Tegal, his international reputation 
by having for international student who studied in fakultas and faculty of business and economic and other to study at English development. Summer camp 2021 is very special. See, we involve our international student to be a speaker and moderator. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Universitas Pancasakti, on which again I would like to welcome you. Glad to see you here and to all Universitas partners. We are looking forward to have withdrawal collaboration again in future, especially in joint research and publication. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Dr. Fahrudin, for your welcoming speech, a uh, very warm welcoming speech. Now I would like to call Ahmed as the moderator today. Ahmed, are you there? Ahmed, are you there? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is an honor for me to it is an honor for me to invite uh Pahudi. Uh He's the representative of the uh, director of STA Vidya Gama Lumajang, East Java. Pak Hudi, are you there to have a welcoming speech for having a wonderful yes. remark? Thank you so much, Pak Hudi. Okay. Thank you. Please do. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Dear ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, uh, the Honorable Rector of Pancasakti University, Kadiri University, IPET University, and the all participant in uh, the summer camp event. Uh, greeting are uh, always healthy. Introduce me. My name is Sudi uh, from Stevidagama Lumajang, student of a representative. Thank you for being invited to join the summer camp event. Hopefully, it can provide insight for student knowledge of local Indonesia culture, especially at the location of college. Uh, Stevi Deka Malumajang, sebagai salah satu uh, sekolah tinggi yang fokus pada uh, ilmu ekonomi dan bisnis, yang insya Allah sebentar lagi akan berganti uh, apa namanya status begitu ya menjadi institut yang sedang berproses adalah uh, berkomitmen di dalam rangka untuk memadukan uh, salah satu budaya supaya menjadi sebuah uh, modal yang turut dikembangkan di dalam rangka mengembangkan uh, kegiatan pendidikan sehingga mampu menjadi sebuah karakter bagi mahasiswa. Kami berterima kasih sekali uh, sudah diundang untuk join di dalam kegiatan uh, summer camp ini dan insya Allah di dalam kegiatan ini uh, kurang lebih ada 100 mahasiswa kami yang mengikuti dan kami berharap ini menjadi sebuah pengalaman baru dan saya rasa ini adalah bagian dari uh, apa namanya sedikit proses begitu ya di dalam uh, konsep mengembangkan uh, merdeka belajar terima kasih thank you for you all uh, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you so much pak hudi for your nice welcoming remarks now i'm going to call ahmed again ahmed are you there i think ahmed has the connection problem ahmed are you there yes, who? Yes, okay, I'm here, please I'm here. continue. Yeah, okay. Thank Dear you. participants, we proudly present a high exposure by Universitas Manchester Gal.
International Summer Camp offers international students an exclusive opportunity to explore a fantastic way to discover college life and an enriching cultural experience. This summer program was organized by Universitas Pancasakti Tegal and STEA Vidya Gama Lumajang. Thank you so much for this wonderful video. We are very really happy to see this video. Terima kasih banyak untuk video ini. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let me invite Dr. Dijako Radiju, MP, Rector of Universitas, Kadri S. Java. Dr. Dijako, please do. <laughs> Monggo Pak Rektor Kadiri, Ahmed, your camera please. We cannot see your face. We cannot see. Monggo Pak Rektor. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Rector of Kadiri University. My name is Ensinyur Joko Rarjo MP. First of all, I would like to say thanks to University of Pancasakti Tegal, especially for Office of Cooperation and International Affairs for giving us the chance to join in virtual international summer camp. Second, I also deliver my appreciation for all honorable speaker of their willingness attending this event and share their knowledge to our student and the last but not least I say thank also for uh, the university who's being the come the co-host for this event. Thanks for your well cooperation. I hope this international summer camp will give us more benefit and also as the initial engagement among Kadiri University with University of Pancasakti Tegal. University of Ifat, University of Vidyagama Lumajang, and also Moscow City University, Russia. Hassan Fas University, Morocco and University Utara Malaysia. That all the welcoming speech from me, and we hope this event can be done annually for making our student has new insight about the global learning. Happy joining international summer camp. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Dr. Dijako. We are very happy to meet you today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to me to invite Dr. Ranta, Rector of Universitas, Evet Central Java. Please do. Please do, Dr. Istamu, please. Prof. Rustomo, silakan untuk pidato. Prof. Rustomo, dari Evet University, Monggo. Ya, terima kasih. Ustono. Ustono, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Your Excellency, Mr. Juri Ardiantoro, PhD, Deputy Chief of Staff of the President of Republic Indonesia for Information and Political Communication, the Honorable Professor Dr. Fahrun MPD, Rector of Universitas Pancasakti Tegal, the respectable director of STEA Widya Gama Lumajang and rector of Kadiri University and all participants in Join International Summer Camp 2021. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's so wonderful to address you all here on this spectacular international event, Joint International Summer Camp. First thing first, I'd like to congratulate Universitas Pancasakti Tegal that has successfully initiated and conducted this event along with your fellow university partners or our beloved student and international student. Also, let me thank to all parties who have already supported and realizing this event with their best effort. We could not have done this without you. Ladies and gentlemen, five and 20 years ago, I never could have imagined that we will experience such pandemic situation where everything has to be done remotely or in online basis. This pandemic has also dredged our educational activity in difficult circumstances and forced us to adapt with it. However, amidst of difficulties created by this pandemic, online-based activity in education has allowed us to broaden and strengthen our relationship with various university, both in national level and international level that we could not reach through traditional communication as if there is no time and place border among us. Fortunately, the Indonesia government has already published a reinforcement program for online-based education for university students, namely freedom of learning, or we familiarly call Merdeka Belajar, university at university level, allowing the student to join learning process in other university classes. This program is a momentum for us to make fundamental changes in educational perception that learning could be done from anywhere and any place. Today's event is the example of how we could make use of online technology as supporting device to study through Joint International Summer Camp 2021 we could explore and share our knowledge to achieve the best quality of product of education, especially for young generation. As a generation who grow up along with the sophisticated technology, millennial students have more opportunities to explore their potential and creativity limitlessly. I believe that among the participants who join this event, I can already see big potential to be the future leaders of Indonesia. I hope that event will be one of your part for better future. Ladies and gentlemen, in this special occasion too, I'd like to announce that Universitas Event is ready to participate in any kind of international event with overseas university around the world. We have also prepared the international class program for those who are going to be part of Universitas Event. We are looking forward to having you as our international student and experience the best university services. Well, I would like to take too much of your time. I need to hand over it to Mr. Ibrahim, our today's MC 
to proceed to the next agenda. I would like to say once more on behalf of Universitas Ifet, welcome. It is great to see so many of you here. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you so much, so much, Dr. Grant Gestum Restumu. We are very happy to see you today. Terima kasih, Paniak. Dear participants, we proudly present a high exposure by, by STYE with the Agama Adum and Junk East Java.
Ahmed, thank you so much. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for this excellent video. We are very happy to see, 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 see you today. Good day. Terima kasih untuk video ini. Kami sangat senang untuk lihat budaya budaya ini. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, by the way, I I'm amazed with the video. It's very nice video, Pak Hudi. Maybe Pak Hudi is still here. Very nice culture of uh, Lumajang. Uh, I just learned a lot about Wayang, especially. Very, very good uh, video. Thank you so much, Pak Hudi and team. And I stay with Gama Lumajang. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to, let's comment by saying Basmal again. I would like to start our joint international seminar today by introducing our honorable speakers at the main table before we start the main agenda. Operator, please. The first speaker is the Honorable Dr. Juri, oh, sorry, Mr. Juri Ardiantoro, PhD, Deputy Chief of, it's not really clear. The, 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 okay. Deputy Chief of Staff of the President of the Republic of Indonesia for Information and Political Communication. He is also the founder of Independent uh, Monitoring Committee of General Elections, Secretary in Independent uh, Monitoring Committees of General Elections. I'm sorry, it's not really clear the, the, the writing, please. Can you start again? Uh, Bapak Ibu, sorry for the technical problems. Okay, thank you so much. It's very clear now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bapak Ibu and Mahasiswa, Adi Mahasiswa, I would like to introduce you to the main table, the Honorable Mr. Juri Ardiantoro, PhD, Deputy Chief of Staff of the President of the Republic of Indonesia for Information and Political Communications. He is also the founder of Independent Monitoring Committee of General Elections, Secretary in Independent Monitoring Committee of General Election, Commissioner of Regional General Elections Commission in DKI Jakarta, Member in General Elections Commission, Chief in General Elections Commissions. Actually, Dr. Juri uh, have so many uh, organizations that uh, lead, uh, led by him, but uh, because there are so many, so I have just put the a short profile of him. Thank you so much, Pak Juri Ardiantoro, for being here with me. Next speaker, please. Okay, Mr. Yosef Bakil, researcher in public law and political science, Hassan First University, and lecturer in Universitas Pancasakti Tegal. Uh, Mr. Yosef Bakil is the lecturer for cross-cultural understanding in English department. Researcher in public law, sorry, the General Secretary of Center of Research and Studies on Migrations and Human Rights, the local coordinator of Students for Liberty. This is an international organization created in USA and have departments in all world countries. He is also international speaker in a lot of conferences. Next speaker, please. Okay, Ms. Anita Andriyasevskaya, Moscow City University, Samara, Russia. In 2021, getting a bachelor degree in Samara branch of Moscow City University, majoring in English and Chinese studies, translation studies. In 2018 to 2019, took a language internship as an exchange <laughs> student in China. Uh, Dalian University of Foreign Language, where she has been attending intensive Chinese language courses, learning Chinese culture, and traveling around the country. After getting back to Russia, she continues studying in university, where she's writing her thesis on the subject of Chinese for now. She was happy to provide a hub to, to her, her university as a Chinese Russian interpreter and participate in conferences dedicated to problems of translations from Chinese and English to Russians for the last two years, he has been working as a Chinese teacher in a language center. Thank you so much. Next, uh, Mr. Danny Suleiman, Editor-in-Chief, South Asian Journal of Social Science and Humanities, PhD, University Utara, Malaysia, Malaysia, but he's from India. Okay, education process, uh, I think uh, he has just uh, graduated from doctoral uh, Doctor of Philosophy, English Literature, University of Tara, Malaysia, uh, Dr. Sulem, uh, Dr. Danny Suleiman, congratulations. Master of Arts, 
English Literature Aligarh Ali Muslim University India, Bachelor of Art English Literature Aligarh Muslim University India. He's English teacher and also in the college six 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 foot count. Hmm. What happens? Internet. Okay, sorry for the uh, technical problem. Okay, editor in chief South. Okay, I'm, we do really sorry for the problems. Can we start again, the operator? I mean, Dr. Danny Suleiman. Okay, Dr. Danny Suleiman. I would. He's also. He's the English teacher. S Y M Intercollegiate Sex Book Counter. Bulan Sahar, India, editor in chief, South Asian Journal of Social Science and Humanities. You see the you can publish your papers here, and the uh, in these journals because he's the editor in, char in charge, and managing editor journal and managing journal of agriculture and elephants. I cannot see well the 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 you know what happens with this one. I cannot see this well. Okay, I'm really sorry. So, the last one is um, because okay. Well, managing editor International Journal of Rehabilitation and Special Education. Help me. Okay. Journal of Agriculture and Allied Fields, and the last one is state coordinator for Charles Walter Society for. Innovation and research. Other and award. Honor and award. Group Nisat Samant. Oh my goodness. Charles Water Society for Innovation Research on 2020. Thank you. Next, please. Ahmad, uh, Mr. Ahmad Khalil Yakubi, international student from Afghanistan. He's studying at Universitas Indonesia right now. Physics and general science teacher, part-time high schools, Nangra in 2015 to 2017. Human resource mit, sorry, human resources admin of officer, organization of skills development and social services, Kabul, Afghanistan. And numerator data collection officer, the Johan Johaniver International Assistance, Kabul, Afghanistan, data analyst research and policy, policy department at the Asia Foundations, Kabul, Afghanistan, volunteer member, Afghan Red Crescent Society, Nangra Branch, volunteer member, Friendship Hand Social Organizations, Kabul. Thank you. Next is uh, Han Mohammed. Ms. Han Mohamed Sedki, international student from Egypt at Universitas Panca Sakti Tegal. Han is the a credit transfer student at the Universitas Panca Sakti Tegal for economic and business faculty. Jadi Han ini adalah mahasiswa internasional untuk transfer credit program yang setengah tahun di Universitas Panca Sakti Tegal. Okay, student in financial markets and institution work as a public relation at Azad Dream, work as a volunteer in Shari, share some Sales Mila and train in bank measure and bank CIB. Um, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the pronunciations, my incorrect pronunciation, and I'm really sorry for the trouble, for the technical problems. Ahmed, back to you. Thank you yeah, so much. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's now time for international webinar. All the speakers will deliver their online talk from 10 to 15 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, as we know, Panchasila is the main ideology of Indonesian people and youth, they are the most effective part inside the country. So I'd like to invite Mr. Jory Aydantoro, the Chief of Staff of the Republic of Indonesia for Information and Political Communication. Mr. Jory Aydantoro, please do. Pak Juri Aydantoro, are you there? Pak Juri, okay. thank uh, you so much. I'm here. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank do. you, Ahmad Ibrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi semua. Good morning. Uh, saya ingin menyapa dan memberi penghargaan kepada seluruh hadirin, orang-orang yang spesial, pertama kepada Pak Rektor UPS, Prof. Rudin, Rektor Ifet Semarang, Direktur Setia Widya Agama Lumajang, Rektor Universitas Kediri, Kediri apa Kadiri, and the honorable of all of the speakers 
and all the participants of the 2021 Joint International Summer Camp from Malaysia, Morocco, Egypt, Russia, India, Afghanistan, and so Indonesia. I'd like to express my appreciation to the Office of Cooperation and International Affairs of Universitas Pancasakti Tegal for their effort in organizing today's event to which we all can agree that this is a very interesting and important topic to be discussed. Um, Bapak, Ibu, teman-teman, dan seluruh serta, I will read the presentation that I have already prepared about this topic uh, because as a representative of the government, even the palace ground, I must be disciplined in public communication and prevent possibilities of incorrect content that will be presented. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my topic is the role of youth leadership with Pancasila character. And allow me to provide you with a little overview on the development and the challenges of communication in the digital era. One can uh, deny that this is an issue we are facing uh, today. One issue that dealing with our activities in my office every day as a deputy of information and political communication and the executive office of uh, president of the Republic of Indonesia. Um, let's take a look at the latest data on the digital world, which I refer from Hootsuite. By early 2021, there are approximately 4.66 billion internet users worldwide, or it count 59.5% uh, of the total 7.83 billion population. Meanwhile, there are 202.6 million internet users in Indonesia or 73.7% of the total 274.9 million population in this country. Of the number of 4.20 billion people worldwide are social media users. In Indonesia, 170 million people are among those of social media users. Um, Looking at this figure, we can certainly conclude that our public sphere is greatly influenced by the internet, especially social media, which has become the fastest channel in distributing various forms of information. Not only fast, but also varied and massive. This is the true characteristic of the internet uh, characteristic of the information in the digital era. Uh, such as characteristic, one the, hand, one the one hand, bring great benefit for all of us. I mean, who doesn't need access to limitless information? However, on the other hand, Picture raises a new question. How to wisely use the existing information? Ladies and gentlemen, we still remember the, nine, the 2019 presidential election when the spreading of hoaxes and misinformation were rampant and it was hard for us to differentiate some credible information to those of hoaxes. Uh, some other countries might have experienced the same situation too, misinformation during the election. I won't lie saying 
that this is not the negative features of communication in the digital era. This is the challenge we this is the challenge we must deal with amid the advanced technology digital. Sorry, technology development. One of the main goals of this era is to create a healthy and trusted digital environment. Because without such a healthy public digital sphere, it would be hard for us to maintain democracy and to build a great civilization. It, it sounds like an impossible mission to run a transparent and democratic public space when negative and misleading content are out there in filter, right? Um, ladies and gentlemen, we will only be able to build a great civilization for all humankind if we encourage such progress through our daily discussions. Hatred and prejudice against other ethnicities or religions can only hinder the solidarity and unity that we long for. Therefore, in order to filter the negative narrative which dominates the public sphere, let us collectively showcase our progress and rebirth the false accusation with our strengthened integrity. Pancasila, as the core ideology of our country, proved to be the fundamental source of norm and values that encompasses various aspects in our life. In my point of view, Pancasila values embody the spirit of Indonesia people that provide us guidance in dealing with any kind of issues. Pancasila consists of five pillars. Uh, one, in belief in one God, we uphold the principle of religiosity. Two, just and civilized humanity, we are full of courtes and always base our life on the principle of humanitarianism. Three, unity of Indonesia. Indonesia always holds on to nationalism. And four, democracy guided by the inner wisdom in the unanimity rising out of deliberation amongst representative. It sends a strong message that Indonesia is a democratic country. Five, social justice for all Indonesian people. In a sense, we always believe in justice and equality before the law. As we are dealing with COVID-19 pandemic crisis, we can relate to the value of social justice, to humanity, to democracy, unity and the divinity of those listed as the five universal, universal principles of Pancasila. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite all of us to responsibly fill the digital and the public sphere with various innovative ideas, progress and effort that are in line with the values of Pancasila. Don't let it constantly be filled with complaint, anxieties, and misinformation. Therefore, I'm proposing this agenda called Working Together to Build the Civilized Post-Pandemic World. Uh, I want to repeat this uh, point. Therefore, I'm proposing this agenda called working together to build the civilized post-pandemic world, which is intended to push for 
responsible use of the digital space. It might be just another agenda, but I can assure you that it encompasses diverse and incoherent issues to, to, be, to be discussed. Most importantly, it is in line with Pancasila values. Any kind of discussion we, meet, we might have in the digital and the public space. Be it with professional colleges, close friends and families, we should always bear in mind that we have to work together to build and maintain the discipline. Work together to build and maintain the civilized world in the post-pandemic era. So we shall put our focus to achieve the same, the same vision. An equal, peaceful, and prosperous world. Thank you. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Pahamid, let me comment. <laughs> Terima kasih Pak Juri Ardiantoro, suatu kehormatan buat kita. It is a great honor for us to have you here because I know you have very, very busy schedule with busy agenda, but you are able to come to this uh, International Summit Care. Again, I would like to express my deepest sincere gratitude to uh, Dr. Juri Ardiantoro. Thank you so much. And I remember well of okay, your- Okay, thank you. I will have this forum, okay? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations on this event. Thank you, Dr. Juri Ardiantoro. See you. Okay, uh, yeah. Ahmed, this is uh, the point is uh, working together to build the civilized world in a post pandemic world. That's uh, Dr. Juri Ardiantoro uh, message for all of us here. Ahmed, back to you. Yeah, okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Dr. Juri Ardiantoro. We are very happy to meet you today. Really. Ladies and gentlemen, politics and the economics, they are the two faces for one thing. Without economics, there is no politics and vice versa. Youth, they are the backbone for its successful development. So I'd like to invite Mr. Yusuf Pakil. He is a, he is a lecturer in political law in, in, in Universitas Hassan, Hassan first to talk about the role of youth, the role of youth in political managing and the economic development. Mr. Yusuf Bakil, please do. Thank Mr. you, Yusuf. Mr. Ahmed, for uh, this nice presentation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salatu wa salamu ala ashrafi wa salim. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa jma'in. Rabbi shahli sadri wa sirli amri wa hlu laqt zalmi sani ifqal qawli. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Madame Yoga for this uh, invitation, this international summer camp for the next, uh, for the second time. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all the speakers and the participants as well as. Thank you, everyone. So uh, my topic is about uh, uh, the role of youth in managing political and economic development in Morocco. So, uh, as an introduction, talking about the political issues and the manner in which it manages, refers out to talking about the groups and the actors involved in the political process. In particular, the royal institution, the most powerful party in the creation and the mingit of domestic and foreigner policy. The government, Parliament, political parties, and precious forces, as well as the activities of civil society, which has recently become an essential partner in the political life of state. All these actors are only a contributor in governance alongside the main actor, the whole institution. The equation of different parties and structures referring us to talk about the role of young people in all this. Do young people have a role in the managing politically in Morocco? 
as a large age group within Morocco society. It is certain that the role of young people within the Moroccan political system is uh, weak and absent. This is the first time that we find that all the leaders, big figures in Morocco are elders and that the youth no longer have feet in politics. This brings us to talk about the phenomenon has become brief within the Moroccan society. A phenomenon that the reductions of young people from politics or what is termed a political strike. This sociopolitics phenomenon that has aroused the interest of most of thinkers and interested in political Moroccan in an attempt to study and search for the cause and try to find the solutions to reduce them. In the context of our talk about Yao and its role in managing political, which defends several problems that present Yao from performing this role, we decide accordingly to study in this research the role of Yao in economic development to see to what extent Yao Moroccan economics development of his country. One of the reasons why we link the role of Yao in political management and economic development is our realistic, realistic belief that no policy without fertile economic ground is appropriate to provide suitable condition for the exercise of political actions. Third above, we will we'll raise the following problem in which we will try to approach the subject. To what extent can we talk about the effective role of young Moroccans in the management of political and economic development? We will approach the subject through two chapters. We will study the role of young people in political management and in the second chapter, we will discuss the role of youth in economic development. So we will start with the chapter one, the role of youth in political management. In our research on this important subject for us, as a young people, of course, and as a researcher in our social and political life, as well as for the political future of Morocco, as an important group within society, they are a reservoir of strength and doubt and must have a major uh, share in political participation and management. The public opinion of the country for this, we will try to start from ourselves, ourselves and our surrounding to try to approach the causes and problems that make the political participation of young people hard and impossible sometimes. In our view, and from the reality of the pension, we refer the reasons and the constraint to limit the political participation among youth to three main reasons. These reasons are manifested in ignorance and illiteracy, the social and political incomes use, urban youths, occupation with political life with other things. We will try to delve into these reasons in an attempt to take note of all the other reasons that we consider to be part of these main reasons. We will first begin with ignorance and illiteracy among young people, of course. We will also in childhood and in relation and in relation with education, of course, and the problem that are known in this sector, as well as its important role in eliminating illiteracy, where we find young Moroccans do not complete their studies often, so we find a large class cut off from studies because of the many reasons, especially poverty, since education is the only mechanism for, for the education, of course, and of educated youth that the country can, can really on in the future. Thus, illiteracy play 
Okay, or in political abstinence, how can an educated young care about politics or understand the basics managing uh, the basics meaning and concept of this science and care about the future of this country. And this become the only concern for the inert or illiterate young men is to come to compensate for what was lost to him by looking for a job and a family to bring hope to life. The second reason in the social and political and conscience of the youth. And we mean the lack of social and political awareness among the youth. Whatever educated or illiterate, as this awareness has nothing to do with the learner of the ignorant, but is a matter of interest and knowledge of the social and political issue. For me, the absence, for me, of course, the absence of this awareness in the responsibility of the state because it's their responsibility to spread the spirit of citizenship among the children as young people of the future, also to spread it among the youth and since it is them as the future of Morocco. And they have to participate effectively and then exhaust this report. They so hope in their hearts and that their country cared about them. This unfortunately is not done by the Moroccan state, which has led the hatred of Moroccan young for this country and immigrants, the other countries, uh, to other countries, of course, and his uh, hatred of his mother country are not interested in him in his age, of course, which led the Moroccan citizens in general and the urban youth, especially to the loss of confidence in the public affairs managers in the country, and therefore he avoid politics. The third reason in the preoccupation of young, of the young with other things in a major regions for the above reasons. And in light of the problems experienced by the country and its impact on the conditions of Moroccan citizens, the Moroccan yield all the cancers away from the interest in politics, which is reflected in his sole concern, has become a search for living as well as for a better future, which led to his turn to immigrate on the one hand and to drugs, which he sees as the only way to escape from reality. On the other hand, and what in uh, what is mean by all this is the same living that is sought by most working out. And the strain and funny and funny the things is that these things are sacrificed sacrificed for which the Moroccan out are originally from his rights as a citizen of Moroccan and the state that granted him and included within the basic rights, but unfortunately, unfortunately the young Moroccan did not choose the right way to gain access to this right, of course. This is all about chapter one. Now we will move to chapter two, and we will discuss about the role of youth in achieving economic development. Before we address the role of youth in achieving economic development, we must address the concepts of economic development as well as the most important characteristics of it. And we'll also address the most important goals that seek economic development. One is a certified economic standards of technology to move from the economic situation to another new, in order to improve them, such as the transition from agricultural to industrial economy or the transition from the commercial and economy to trade. Basic technology economic development is defined 
to the process aimed at promoting the growth of a nation economy by applying several development plans that make it more advanced and developed, that's positively, positively affecting society throughout the implementation of a series of successful economic strategies, of course. To benefit from the walls available in their environment, especially in areas where the absence of economic diversity, diversification negatively affects the local environment in general. Economic development is characterized by a set of characteristics, including attention to achieving development goals based on the existence of appropriate work strategies aimed at reaching the desired economic growth rate. To improve and improve the internal environment of the community and the social economy and the local economy, of course, sector of the state. Reliance on self economic efforts to achieve enhanced economic development for the application of planning in government and economic institutions interested in boosting economic growth continuously. Take care to exploit the resource and enhance the capabilities of the rule of industry, agriculture, and local trade as required by the economic reality to us, to means and tools to allow the advancement of all type of work. The use of technology and advanced electronic devices to provide appropriate support for economic development by investing in the potential and scientific and cognitive capabilities diverse, which contribute to the development of many areas. The most important research education economic development aims to achieve many goals as follow increasing national incomes. This is the main objective and first of the objectives of economic development. It contributes to the development of the standards of living of individuals and strains structural structure of trade and industry local economy, investment of natural resources. This objective seeks to strengthen the presence of domestic and international investment of natural resources located on the territory of states, by supporting public infrastructures and by providing appropriate means to support production public service, capital support. This objective is concerned with providing adequate support to weak and vulnerable public capital because of the lack of saving associated with the central bank financial reserves. Commercial bank with money or ordinary or, ordinary or diversified securities such as a bond, attention to trade exchange. This objective is specific to the development of, tri of trade and is concerned with the follow-up of exports and trade imports based on the promotion of trade between developing countries and other countries, especially those that purchase exports and affordable prices with help to support basic needs of the population. Other seen administrative corruption by paying attention to the development of law and legislation that limit the spread of administrative corruption will affect the stability of the economic sector and of course uh, the economic sector and exploit its resource. This, this treatment contributes to the development of the local economy and the promotion of its growth and property in all five. External development management, this objective is linked to the need to monitor the amount of money or with the government of development of the developing countries and to find the appropriate way and mean to pay this debt. 
which contribute to the promotion of economic growth and increase expanding for production. As for the role of young Moroccan initiative in economic development, it remains a weak role. At least we want to talk about it in the context of the participation of youth in the activities of civil society association, associations and cooperatives, which are concerned with the economic nature and aims to achieve profits in an attempt to change the economic situation of young people. These associations and cooperatives, which have been managed by young people, which have recently been very successful so that they can achieve large rates in development and indicators. In many cases, the situation of many young people has changed from the worse to the better because of their involvement in projects, development, aimed and at improving the economic situation of young people. So as a conclusion, young people should be rethinking and determining the states they should be in as well as defining the role they should play as the older age group in society and the more able to give. Accordingly, a new idea must be developed based on the involvement of young people in political management as well as the integration of young people into most development projects in order to involve them in achieving economic development and strengthening their status and role within society. So this is all about uh, my presentation. Thank you everyone for your attention and I give you the floor, Mr. Ahmed. Thank you so much, Mr. Yosef Bakil, Ahmed. So yeah, the involvement, okay. yeah, okay. Let Thank me you, comment. Madam Yoro. Yeah, you're welcome, Mr. Yosef Bakil. So the involvement of young people in, econom in economically and politically are very important, uh, not only in Morocco, but all over the world. So young people uh, determines the future of the countries. Thank you so much, Mr. Yosef Bakil. Yes, of course. Uh, Ahmed, back to you, please. Yeah, okay. Yeah, back Thank to you. Thank you so much, Mr. Yosef Bakil, for your presentation. We are very happy to meet you today. You can get them, Mr. Yusuf. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Thank nice you. to meet you. Dear participants, we proudly present a culture performance by Kateri University East Java. Kadiri? Oh, 
Thank you so much for this, this culture. We are very happy to see to see um, you today. Okay, Ahmed, let me talk. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, okay Ahmed. Mm -hmm. Let me talk a bit. Uh, Bapak Ibu, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say that uh, Mr. Yosef Bakil is uh, leaving because tomorrow he is working at 7 a.m. Now he is, I think it's um, 3 a.m. and Morocco, so see, 
would like to ask. I'm uh, sorry. He he would like to ask your permissions for leaving so early because he needs to to prepare for his work tomorrow. And I would like to say that uh, uh, today uh, we have we would like to thank you so much. Uh, uh, my our sincere gratitude to all the university partners, Universitas Ivet Kad Ivet Universitas. Kadiri and SDA Abidya Gama Lumajang for joining the international summer camp today. And also uh, our co-host today, Adri Indonesia. I would like to uh, extend my gratitude also for uh, our Ketua Umum, uh, the President of Adri Indonesia, Dr. Fatoni Rodli, and also Ketua Adri Jawa Tengah, uh, the chairperson of Adri Jawa Tengah of Central Java, Dr. Tafi Kuloh M. Hum. I believe he he is now uh, is watching our joint international program. I'm sorry, our joint international summer camp program uh, via YouTube. Thank you so much, Bapak Ibu. Mr. Yosef Bakil tadi uh, minta uh, izin untuk meninggalkan karena besok harus bekerja dan di sana adalah jam 3 pagi. So he needs to prepare everything. Thank you so much. Back to you, Ahmed. Ahmed, back to you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, studying abroad is a dreaming of each one. We always face abusive things and negative things. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite the honorable speaker, Mrs. Anita Andrzejewska, a student in Moscow City, University of Samara, Russia. She will talk about get to know study abroad and the global learning. Mrs. Anita, please do. Mrs. Anita? Hello? Sorry, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank yeah, you for yeah. your presentation. Yeah. Uh, good morning again to all the organizers and participants of today's event. I highly appreciate this opportunity to tell you about my experience studying abroad. Well, I first I'd like to share my presentation to you. So please tell me, can you see it or not? Can you see the picture? Yes, we can. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Well, today I'd like to tell you about my experience of studying abroad, and my scene uh, of the concept conception of global learning. Uh, my name is Anita. This year I graduated from Moscow City University where I got a bachelor degree of English and Chinese studies. And uh, three years ago, I got a chance to take part in our exchange program. Uh, before pandemic, uh, which was a sweet time, our university hosted Chinese and Taiwanese students, as well as Russian students, went abroad uh, to take their places. Well, uh, sometimes um, people make bad, make bad choices, right, and regret about that after. But the decision to go to China for one year was the best decision in my life. Why I was so determined to go? Well, my major is languages, foreign languages, and that's why. And still, I believe that um, it's almost impossible to become fluent in any language, not part not practicing it with native. Uh, so language is not only about grammar, words, and pronunciation. Any language has many shadows, and we need to feel it. We need to immerse into foreign culture completely. And uh, just a few classes per week in home country are far from being enough. Uh, so that is that's that that. that that was one of the reasons why I decided to go to China, just practicing my language. And uh, before I got to China, I hadn't expected that it would change me so much. It literally raised a new person inside me, uh, the Chinese version of me. And uh, we know that learning language abroad has many advantages. For example, we, need, we have opportunity to immerse into foreign reality, uh, we practice language every day and every minute. Uh, we uh, have chance to participate in cultural events. We may share the culture of our own. And uh, there are a lot of new challenges. So 
And one of the, the most important advantages of these things is that uh, when we study language abroad, there are very great balance of theory of language and practice, practicing of language. That's very good. Um, okay, so uh, when, that's very great, of course, but usually we don't think of the other side of the experience. That was cultural shock. I knew about it in theory as we learned with emphasis in Russia, but I had no idea that it's so true. Um, getting abroad for long-term residence, a foreigner goes through five stages from the point A, uh, like a guest, to the point B uh, when he feels like at home. And it reminds me of the stages of falling in love. The first stage is a honeymoon, when everything makes you happy. Uh, you take photos of all the details of all the people. You want to stay there forever and you find nothing to complain. And that's very natural. That was very easy because we used to live in a very comfortable double room uh, with my group mate from Russia. The university, uh, the university territory, the campus was so big and there was everything inside that we needed. During the first week, we made many friends from different countries. Uh, and I just remember that moment when I was walking around uh, this campus, smiling with no reason and thinking what a happy girl I am that I got this chance, uh, chance to go abroad. This feeling of freedom and happiness was like petrol for us to study as we wanted to speak to Chinese people, of course. And uh, during the first semester, we were studying hard. Classes, then a bit of rest, then homework and self-study until night, and then again and again and again. And gradually, we got used to the atmosphere getting the second stage of cultural shock that I call normal, just normal. So the second stage of cultural shock, when you, it, it feels like when you already know everything around you, um, and everything already doesn't surprise you as much as before. In our class, we got a lot of students from many, many countries like Japan, Russia, Europe, France, Italy, and German. Uh, I got a group made from Indonesia also, and that is Korea, and they were. That, that Amazing, really, uh, because uh, every day you listen to different, different languages from any corner, and uh, that was great. Um, but, uh, yeah, so during the first semester, we were studying and studying and studying, and then we decided that we need to go out and see China, and uh, that was a very good decision. Okay. Then, in the winter, after a half year of living in China, we faced the third stage of cultural shock, they call desperate. And this is normally, like now, I understand that that is normal. All the foreign students started missing their homes, and uh, that wasn't easy, uh, really. But we coped with that with the help of traveling. I understood that new experience was the best treatment. And we started traveling around China. I visited Beijing, Chongjing. Uh, I got to the Great Wall of China. I met a lot of new people. And due to our hard studying before, I wasn't afraid to talk anymore. I started practice Chinese with natives uh, and other foreign students as well. Sometimes I went to the center of Dalian, of the city I lived in, and I used to get lost in the city on purpose, just in order to ask the road in Chinese. Uh, so when there were no challenges, I came up with them by myself. And at that moment, I realized that language is all about practice. And it is much easier than I thought. So what is global learning? Now I can say that uh, we are so lucky to live in the 21st century 
when we have possibility, just go abroad and shorten the way of learning languages. Online courses also may help, but unfortunately studying online, <clears throat> we don't go through the stages of culture shock. But for some people, it is not necessary, so that's okay. Global learning unites people in the way they begin to understand each other better. Of course, I see it from my major, from my major perspective, uh, learning languages, right? Italian University of Foreign Languages uh, provided foreign students with possibilities to cooperate with each, to, with each other and to show them uh, themselves. We took part in intercultural festivals, sport activities, and so on. And as a result, I got to the final stage of culture shock uh, is true love. I got to it through euphoria, hard work, stress, and uh, thousands of emotions. Finally, love. I accepted everything in China, like at home. And a year later, our first meeting, uh, a year later, after our first meeting with this country, I felt that I behave, talk, and look like local people. That was funny. I didn't want to go back, and nobody wanted, in fact. We were crying all the last day of staying in the dorm, all the students there. And that was really unforgettable little life. Some people found, found love there. I found a lot of friends. And the Chinese language turned out to be not a purpose, but a side effect. Mm, that was surprising mm, to me. I feel so grateful for everything. And since that, somebody asked me, should they go somewhere to study? I say yes, for sure. Uh, at such kind of places, when you spend every day in company of people from different cultures, you realize that no matter what language you speak or how you look, we all are people and uh, we are people who share one beautiful world. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I hope that was interesting to you. If you have any questions, please ask me. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Anita, for very nice presentations. We love that very much to learn a lot about uh, traveling abroad and also studying abroad. Ahmed, back to you. Ahmed, yeah, okay. thank you yeah, yeah, so okay. much. Thank, thank you. you so much, Mrs. Anita, for your presentation. We are very happy to meet you today. Uh, before we go to the next speaker, I'd like to say uh, it's a very excellent culture for uh, Category University. I really love, love it and it's very beautiful. Thank you so much for it. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Yeah, okay. Okay. To writing an article in a journal, it's not easy as we think. There are many rules we should follow. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to me to invite. Mr. Yusuf, Mr. Denis Suleiman to talk about fun writing and effective journal articles and get it published. Mr. Denis Suleiman, please do. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you Salam. so much, Ahmed. Salam. First of all, I would like to uh, welcome all the rectors and uh, organizers and uh, coordinators of this webinar. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Yoga for giving me opportunity uh, to speak uh, here and share my knowledge on uh, article writing and get it published. So without further delay, uh, let me share my slides. Okay, so can you see? Yes, we can see well, Dr. Danis. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so today uh, I'm going to speak on um, the secrets of uh, writing a research article and uh, what are the ways in which we can successfully get our articles published. 
So nowadays, as we can see that uh, there is a, a lot of, lot of, uh, you know, research is going on and uh, students uh, uh, struggling around to get their articles published. There are many, many reasons behind the, behind uh, not getting the articles published because uh, sometimes they, uh, the, the, the message, the research, the point of view that they are, they want to convey through the articles. It's not uh, that much clear, and uh, sometimes it does not provide uh, so much uh, knowledge to the gap. So, in today's presentation, we will uh, talk about these issues. Okay. So, uh, I think Dr. Yoga already uh, introduced my uh, uh, CV to you all. In case if you need any kind of guidance, any kind of suggestions from me, uh, you can uh, email me on this email ID. Okay, so today we are going to talk about uh, some key elements of publication and uh, in what, uh, what will be the structure of the article uh, that we need to follow in order to make our article uh, good so that it can be easily published. And then we, are, we will talk about article submission process, how publisher or peer review process work, the authors and readers priorities. Okay. So uh, writing an article sometimes is quite uh, uh, daunting and it's quite uh, you know, difficult for some uh, students, even for some scholars, when they are not able to find an exact gap, that exact, exact problem, that uh, what they are trying to uh, convey. So even if uh, the research is uh, groundbreaking research, it, it, it's possible to get uh, rejected unless the paper is correctly written. So, if you have something in your uh, article and its quality is good, it's clearly defining its gap, its problem, and its uh, methods and each and everything. So, you know, at best, sometimes in good journals, it can be delayed, the process of publication. And if you lack these uh, elements in your article, then at worst, it will not get published. So uh, this presentation will let you know that how you can structure your article and uh, how can you address the problems in your article so that it will become easy for you to get your, the article published in uh, your targeted journal. So there are some key elements uh, in the article that you need to follow and uh, you need to keep in mind that uh, first is style and language. It's really important that what is style and what language you are uh, uh, focusing on. Then we have a structure of the paper. It's also important. Then components of the paper. What are the components that you need to uh, mention in your article in order to uh, uh, fully understandable? Then uh, article submission or journal selection in which journal you need to submit and then the process of publication. So let's talk about first style and language. So uh, in my suggestion, whenever you uh, write any article or whenever you choose any topic, first of all, uh, choose a journal that, uh, you know, that provides you the, that scope of your article, okay? And then you have to refer to the journal's uh, guidelines so that you can properly follow the style of that journal, what uh, it demands and uh, in what manner uh, that uh, journal asks you to uh, format your article. Okay. And uh, another thing is, uh, you know, many journals focus, uh, many journals, they follow the same, uh, same uh, pattern, same style, but there are uh, some big journals, maybe you can, uh, you know, if we talk about some elsewhere journals and some, uh, you know, Rotelay journals, so they are, you know, having, have their own uh, style. So you must follow them. Okay, so in language, 
I would suggest that uh, using a very uh, complex kind of words or you know very complex language is not uh, suggestible. Okay, because you have to understand that okay for what audience you are writing. It doesn't matter that okay. Uh, of course, the journal is important. The journal selection and its uh, you know its requirements is also important. But at the end, journal is not going to uh, judge you on the complexity of the language. Of course, the language should be yeah. in a correct manner. It, it, sh it uh, should not have grammatical mistakes and uh, coherence and each and everything should be in a perfect manner. But the complexity of the, uh, yeah. of the uh, words or the sentences should not be there. Because at the end, these article or your article is going to be uh, read by the uh, other scholars and the people. So in order to make them easy to understand your uh, uh, article, you have to use easy language. You have to use uh, convincing language. Okay. And uh, uh, you should avoid the uh, article that uh, we write in very poorly uh, manner. By poorly manner, I mean that we do not focus on language, grammar, you know, connections of the uh, uh, connectivity between the paragraphs. So these things we should fo focus. Second, uh, as we know that mostly uh, the articles that we uh, write, we always write in English. And uh, uh, sometimes, you know, we have yeah, options for local language publications as well. But in order to uh, enhance the, uh, you know, area for our readers, we always, uh, you know, opt to publish our articles in English. So if you are not from uh, English speaking country or you're not native English speaker, so I suggest that you should uh, send your article to uh, proofread to, uh, uh, to proofread so that uh, its language and each and everything should be uh, okay. Now, uh, structure of the paper. Uh, you know, uh, most of the uh, journals have, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, they follow the same structure. But it's 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 good uh, and it's advisable to always always first uh, you know, go through the uh, guidelines for the author to the specific journal. Okay, whenever you uh, decide to publish in any journal, for example, if uh, as uh, you know, you know that I'm editor uh, in chief of South Asian Journal of Social Sciences and Humanities. So, in case you want to publish your article in my journal, okay, then you need to go to the author's guidelines, and from there you need to download template, okay, or read guidelines that in met, okay, you need to uh, write your article. So, uh, you know because. Uh, your article uh, structure depends on what you are providing and uh, if we talk about the readers then some people they just refer to the title in order to understand what your article is all about some people may uh, read your title and abstract to get a gist of uh, the complete article and if if they found that it, the article is interesting and it's uh, uh, up to the requirement and what they are searching for, then they will go for uh, reading the whole paper. So uh, if we talk about the um, sections or components of the paper, then these are some, uh, you know, universal uh, sections that are mostly all the uh, journals uh, they follow and they suggest to provide in, uh, in a research article. So we have like title, authors, abstract, keywords, introduction, methods, result, discussion, acknowledgement, references, and appendixes. So appendices is not uh, you know, uh, compulsory, but it depends on the journal you choose to publish your article. Now, author listing is also important. Uh, it, uh, like, you know, sometimes it, uh, it, said, it has been observed that uh, some people, they uh, mention their friend's name without uh, their contribution in the research. And sometimes, you know, it happens that uh, that uh, the other authors, they do not even belongs to the same study, same area. So 
it's not advisable and it's of course uh, you know uh, not good ethically as well you know because whatever you are writing you are contributing to the journal of course you want to help your friends to uh, maybe you know they do this just to fulfill their requirements maybe in universities in colleges and uh, for whatever reasons but you should always list only the authors that uh, work that uh, work for their, uh, this particular article okay do not try to add uh, people from outside uh, uh, especially from the uh, study area okay so uh, if we talk about the title your title should uh, be descriptive enough and should not be uh, lengthy you know it should clearly uh, describe that what exactly your article is all about some people they just choose uh, you know normal title and uh, by the title you cannot easily understand that okay uh, you know uh, it's the title is not specific sometimes so you try to uh, you know put make your title as specific as you can so that it can uh, portray your whole article so that the reader if suppose if i am interested in some work um, and and i am finding some research and if i find you know i i go through several article uh, articles on the google or scopus uh, database or you know different databases so i will look for some uh, article title that will catch my eye and that article uh, title you know uh, will be specific will be related to my area of study what i am interesting for so if you use only general articles normal articles uh, title then it won't attract the people and uh, yeah of course it's uh, your title is the advertisement of the article you know it it's the image it's it's, your, it's the face of your article and uh, do not try to use abbreviations or jargons in your uh, title you know because of course it's not advisable it's not correct to use any kind of abbreviation in uh, the, in the title so and as i uh, as i mentioned uh, here that uh, whenever i try to search the uh, any article i go for the databases so the your title should be specific clearly uh, you know portray the whole gist of your uh, article so it will be easy for the people to search go for the article that you have written and published abstract so uh, if we talk about abstract abstract in uh, most of the journals uh, they prefer to uh, uh, you know summarize the whole article right in between 150 to 250 words sometimes some journals they allow more than 250 but mostly they focus on 150 to 250 words and uh, in that uh, abstract you have to uh, mention all the the problems that you are discussing in your article the methodology you are uh, using the results and the conclusions uh, that you provided in the article so that any reader who is in uh, who is going to uh, read your abstract can understand that okay it may be uh, related to his study and it may benefit him uh, for his research so that he can download or he can view uh, read your whole article and it will be good for you as well to increase uh, your visibility and uh, citations because the uh, more precise and clear the, uh, the abstract the more uh, uh, audience it will attract okay so together uh, the title and the abstract should stand on their own it means that as i uh, discussed earlier in the title section the title is the mirror of your article and abstract is the gist of uh, your article so they both uh, together work as uh, you know uh, something that can uh, motivate a student and uh, motivate a scholar or reader to read your article completely uh, 
most authors write the abstract last so that it accurately reflects the content of the paper. So uh, it's actually the best strategy for writing the abstract uh, because it's our habit. You can say that first of all, we go through the abstract first that, okay, we provide the abstract, the gist of the uh, whole article that, that uh, we are going to write, you know, so try not to write the abstract uh, at first, always first finish your research whatever you are targeting to get results from your article then only you go for writing the abstract use keywords uh, that can attract the readers okay okay introduction so in introduction uh, i suggest that you should always always uh, you know use proper language proper words proper uh, sentences that can uh, you know uh, discuss or highlight the problem that you are going to investigate that you are going to deal with the background of uh, uh, the study that uh, you are going to focus on and what uh, are the reasons that motivated this study to be conducted okay so uh, summarize relevant research to provide context you know you can discuss uh, but, but you should not discuss wholly in detail uh, just to provide, you know, one or two references in the introduction, just to provide, you know, introductory uh, background uh, for the research that, okay, what has been done before and what new are you are going to introduce in uh, your research. Identify the questions you are uh, uh, answering, of course, because uh, whenever you conduct any study, of course, you have to make uh, some uh, objectives for your study that, okay, these are the objectives that I, I will... Uh, you know, uh, I will uh, try to solve the two research questions through studies, through past, uh, past uh, literature. So you should, uh, you know, highlight these uh, research objectives and questions in your study. Explain uh, what other findings, in, uh, you know, you are challenging or extending. Maybe there are some past studies that you are going to challenge them that okay these studies did not able to highlight the issue that you are going to investigate and uh, what what's new is there and uh, how it will help uh, the future researcher or the society or whatever in perspective you are writing the uh, article and your introduction should also you know briefly uh, describe the hypothesis, research questions, general experiment methods, uh, you know, in just one or two uh, sentences, not in the, because in further sections, you have to uh, describe the elements of the article in detail. Now, methodology. If we talk about the methods, so uh, it it's good, you know, it's always suggested that you should always uh, provide enough detail to the uh, readers so that they can, uh, you know, uh, focus on your uh, uh, article and your is, uh, study and research. And you have to explain that uh, uh, how you focus, how you, uh, you know, relate this problem, how you identified this problem through methodology. That okay, these are the methods. These are the, uh, you know. Uh, tools by which you identify the problem and you study the problem and uh, how you are going to uh, you know defend your uh, research questions or uh, whatever you are trying to research in your article okay explain new methodology in detail otherwise name the method and cite the previous published work it's good that if you discuss any methodology in details and uh, in, uh, if not, then you have to, uh, you know, mention some methodologies that previously used and uh, provide citation, provide references to that. Include the frequency of observations, what types of data were recorded. So, uh, because every research has a data, okay, Be uh, you are going to conduct your study on a specific sample uh, that you are taking, okay. So you have to provide that what method you used to collect that data that sample your study. 
and how you are going to uh, uh, you know conduct this study on this on this uh, data okay uh, now the results so results should be uh, you know uh, clear explain uh, exactly what uh, you found uh, uh, through your research through your objectives through your research questions and uh, show that your new results are contributing to the body of scientific knowledge you should justify it you have to justify that okay these are the findings that i that my research uh, you know uh, provided and how, how and in what way this uh, these results are going to contribute in the future uh, researches and uh, current uh, scientific knowledge follow uh, the uh, follow a logical sequence based on the tables and the figures presenting the findings to answer the questions or hypothesis figures should have a brief description you know sometimes it happens i uh, saw in many uh, articles many you know authors they send articles for publication in our journal and uh, they only you know uh, mention provide image provide figures but they do not discuss they do not provide that okay what what uh, this table is all about what this figure is all about they just simply uh, connect the context and then provide uh, figure so it should not uh, you should not do like this whenever you are providing any figure you should always explain what this figure is all about how it's going to do this. figure okay so no discussion and conclusion Describe what your results mean in context of what was already known about the subject. Okay, that's this is already that I uh, mentioned earlier, and indicate how uh, the results relate to expectations and to the literature previously cited. Yeah, this is important. That okay, the literature that you discussed uh, in the previous uh, sections. that uh, what are the studies already been conducted on the current topic or uh, current vari variables what you are like in the sample or uh, data so uh, your in discussion and in conclusion you have to uh, mention the results that what's going to be new what's going to uh, what are the things that is going to add in the present literature and that is that was not there in the previous uh, literature explain how the research has moved the body of scientific knowledge forward you have to prove that okay this research is worthy okay and uh, you can do this it's, it's easy it's not difficult because it's your research and you know what exactly you are trying to do uh, it's uh, yeah. because as a as a as a editor or as a reviewer our our role is just to give you guidance to uh, write uh, an article in a proper way but the research is your own it's your uh, own uh, you know uh, we can say it's your own baby so you know uh, what do you have to do you know what you are going to do in this and what uh, exactly you are expecting expecting from it okay so always uh, try to be uh, clear and precise in your discussions and in your conclusions uh, you know but with the help of the research objectives and uh, the previous literature do not extend your conclusions beyond what is directly supported by your results avoid undue speculation and uh, yeah now we uh, let's talk about references references are uh, you know really important uh, for any article in order to justify your work for example suppose if you are uh, uh, writing article and uh, you make you mention some sentences but you do did not provide <coughs> uh, references for that sentence so it it uh, it will be you know uh, uh, it would be not it would not be good you know to uh, not provide uh, what you are 
writing because it will not uh, what uh, what should i say that uh, it will not support your study that much that okay you only just mention the you know just writing a story kind of kind of story you're not uh, mentioning any put any references there so it's really necessary that okay from where did you study this from where did you get this suppose you uh, mention any data from uh, you know world health organization or any other you know source so you have to mention otherwise it see it will uh, look like that it's your own statement it's your own point of view that is uh, really wrong uh, in research and uh, journals always focus what you are writing what you are mentioning what you what you are providing okay in the form of sentences in the form of uh, data or figure anything so whatever you are putting in your article you should provide reference to image to table to anything whatever you are taking from or you are uh, Uh, reading from some uh, other place you should uh, provide a friends okay so now let's uh, now if uh, when you uh, do all these uh, things and complete your article now it's the time to submit uh, your article okay once you follow the guidelines of the article uh, the journal and then format your article in the correct form and uh, each and everything now your article is ready now it's time for you to give it for publication to some uh, journals so uh, first of all you have to select your journal very carefully it should be related to the scope of your study otherwise uh, you know it will be rejected suppose for example my area is uh, women studies and uh, you know gender studies so if i uh, write any article on women issues in uh, india or in any uh, any uh, you know research like this then i sh- I, I, ca- i cannot submit it to some education journal or some uh, you know journal that is different from my scope my area okay so scope of the journal is uh, very important uh, to get your article uh, published and uh, so that art you know otherwise uh, what happened otherwise <coughs> your article will be rejected uh you know at the first uh, moment because it will not meet the requirements of the journal so it's uh, really advisable to choose your journal very carefully you should read the aim and the scope of the journals and who reads them and what has been published because sometime it happens that you thought that okay this is the journal that uh, i should uh, submit my article to but you do not know that okay what has been published in that journal maybe for you it looks like that okay this is a journal for me okay but that journal <laughs> did not publish any article related to your study because every study have some specific journals and then from a specific to more specific journals they categorize it in different ways so always go uh, through their websites their guidelines and each and everything think about that uh, your target audience and level of your work do you have a realistic chance of being accepted sometime it happens that we uh, we always know that what we have written is and our, is our article is uh, good enough to get published in uh, scopus journals or good enough to publish in isi journals or at least have a chance to get uh, you know get acceptance from them and sometimes we write you know we initiate uh, writing journals and publishing uh, the journals if peer review journals okay so you have to uh, be very careful while uh, you know selecting that uh, the quality of the journal in which you are going to send now the journals are of uh, you know have uh, two types they are a uh, broad scope journals okay and there are some uh, specialized uh, journals so by broad journal we mean i mean that uh, that covers multidisciplinary you know in uh, easy term we can say a multidisciplinary journal that can you know publish education from literature from uh, management uh, you know from different areas so like uh, i journal south asian journal of social science and humanities it's a multidisciplinary journal on uh, 
social sciences and humanities. So any uh, article that comes to us from this area will be taken into consideration. Of course, after the review, it will get published or rejected. And uh, broad journal maybe it happen. It, it doesn't mean that broad journals also give you consideration for publication because uh, broad journals are sometimes also, uh, you know, specific in some areas. Like uh, uh, South Asian journal is only focusing on uh, social sciences and humanities. Okay, we do not uh, take any articles from mathematics, from engineering, from uh, you know uh, science fields. And then we have a specialist uh, journal that, uh, that focus on a spe specialized fields that is, uh, you know, very specific on maybe some management or maybe, uh, you know, on English literature or maybe on ELD, you know, these, kind, these are some specific journals that, uh, so you should focus that uh, uh, which kind, which type of uh, journals you have to focus and uh, you have to send uh, your article now there are open access and subscription type of journals some journals they are open access uh, by open access uh, we mean that they uh, you know uh, they charge some uh, fees from you and they provide you your article. Uh, they provide you a platform there from where you know readers can read their uh, readers can uh, read your article easily they can download it and there is no uh, restrictions for uh, downloading or reading your article in open access journals so of course they charge you some amount for publishing your article and then uh, we have subscription type of our uh, journals in which uh, you do not have to pay uh, article processing charges and uh, but you know these journals have subscriptions so uh, your article won't be available for uh, uh, you know publicly so uh, you know they will not be readers will not be able to download it and read your article incomplete they just able to see your title uh, journal now the submission process there is uh, nowadays most of the journals they follow online submission process in there it becomes easy for authors to just uh, you know follow the guidelines format their articles according to the journal's guideline and submit their article online and uh, you know most some journals also they follow uh, direct submission through emails okay uh, it always it is it is mentioned uh, there in the on the on the journal's website so whenever you choose any journal you should uh, read that okay for which uh, submission you uh, need to follow how you can submit your article so maybe they provide you some online link or they can, they can ask you to send your article on their email address. So now uh, what's the process of uh, after submission? Okay, so after submission, uh, first of all, the general editors will look for, uh, uh, you know, the scope of your article, whether it falls uh, into the scope, scope of the journal. If yes, then they will, uh, you know, process your article for review process and they will send you a notification that uh, your article is approved for review process. And if not, if your article falls out of the scope of that uh, journal, then they will uh, send you rejection or they will suggest you some other journal for your reference. Okay. They always provide sometimes two or three referees uh, for uh, your review process. And uh, the process and the time of uh, the processing your uh, review process is different uh, from journal to journal. Okay. And uh, after the uh, review process, the editor will again send you message regarding, okay, you got accepted, you get uh, your article is accepted with revision, maybe minor or major, or it rejected after the review process. And if a paper is rejected, most uh, editors will write to you, uh, to you explaining their decision. Actually, they will provide in the review process, reviewer's decision that why your article uh, is rejected. Okay. And after rejection, authors have the option of submitting the paper to another journal. Editor suggestion should be addressed. It will also help you uh, whenever you get any rejection from any journal, do not, uh, you know, 
dishearten or do not demotivate yourself because it will also going to help you you will get uh, corrections from the reviewers uh, that will help you to improve your article and after addressing those issues those uh, reviews those suggestions you know you can improve your article and then submit to other another journal so uh, these are some keys for editor that uh, what uh, exactly the editor looks for uh, when he decide to you know uh, process your article to review process you know journal scope language or uh, is, uh, is 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 the science good uh, targeted to the journal's audience and uh, is it interesting new okay and is it big enough advance sorry is it big enough advance for the field of this journal so these are some important uh, things you should uh, the editors uh, you know always focus on then we have preview uh, peer review process that i already explained you and models of uh, peer review there are closed peer review and open peer review closed peer review in which you know uh, you will not uh, able to know sorry okay in peer review process uh, there are closed peer review and open peer review so in okay uh, i think it's uh, you know uh, getting uh, you know taking time so i'll just uh, wrap it up uh, okay so this is the after peer review process that i already discussed with you <clears throat> these are some public uh, publishing tips this is also i discussed earlier that what points you have to focus before uh, sending your article to any journal and what editors and reviewers are going to look and uh, <clears throat> these are readers priorities that what readers are looking for they are looking for authoritative quality articles and uh, ease of access rapid delivery convenient format linking of information clustering low or no cost and up to date information okay so these are some author versus readers behavior okay that what are uh, authors uh, perspective while uh, writing an article and what readers behave uh, behavior or perspective while reading the article so i'll share the slides with you so that you can go through it uh, you know in detail because i don't want to take i think i already take so much time so <laughs> i don't want to uh, take much more time so now yeah so it's enough from my side okay thank you so much and uh, i'm sorry <laughs> dr yoga for taking so long <laughs> no no it's <laughs> fine so uh, we love your presentations <laughs> very much about the journal and uh, you're great thank you so much yeah <laughs> no actually it needed you know detailed discussion that's why it quite <laughs> Now we love it very much, thank Dr. Dani. Thank you so much. Uh, we learned a lot from the journal thank you, thank publication you. because you are the expert. We know that. Bapak Ibu, Dr. Dani ini expert di uh, jurnal publication. Jadi kalau mau tanya-tanya mengenai jurnal, bisa ke Dr. Dani ya. Beliau ini ahlinya. Jadi beliau ini editor in chief uh, South Asian of uh, I don't remember <laughs> well the social and humanities. Okay, S A G S S right H. Ya, nah, oke. Okay. Bapak Ibu yeah, bisa right. ya Bapak Ibu uh, dari universitas, universitas lain bisa mengirimkan artikel ke jurnalnya beliau ini jurnal internasional. Nanti bisa kontak langsung you can contact directly to Dr. Danis. Is that okay Dr. Danis? Dr. Danis, is that okay if they contact you directly? Yeah, of course, of course. Definitely. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Ahmed, back to you. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, they can contact you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Danish, for your talk. We are very happy to meet you today. It's a very nice presentation. Thank you so much for this. Uh, it's an honor for me. Uh, I'd like to say welcome uh, for Mrs. Uh, for Mrs. Vita, uh, University of Kadri. Saya sangat senang untuk bertemu dengan anda hari ini. Selamat datang untuk ikut sama kami hari ini. Okay. Okay. Hey, participants, 
We presently present a high exposure biodiversity event. Yes, Bu Yvette. Mano kundo nakai mencela mencela pada telana merah warna merah lakuni. Johnny, ea, 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 ea,
Thank you so much for this excellent video. We are very happy to see this culture today. It's an honor for me. I'd like to say well, uh, to say thank you for Mr. Luluk, for Dr. Luluk, the vice rector of Universitas Sebet, who made this song. We are very happy to see it today. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Amit, let me talk a bit. Ya, Bapak Ibu tadi itu penyanyinya adalah Bu Dr. Lulu, Vice Rector dari uh, Universitas Ibet uh, Semarang. Suaranya sungguh merdu sekali. Uh, nyanyi Jawanya luas banget, gih, Bu Lulu, gih. Terima kasih banyak videonya, very great. Thank you so much. Back to Ahmed. Uh, Bu Yoga itu tariannya, dancingnya itu karya tradisional dance from Dr. Maria Dino Bukti Agustiningrum, MPD. Ah, oh, oh, that's Thank you. great. Thank you so much for the yeah. information, uh, Ibu Lulu. Terima kasih banyak untuk informasinya. Okay. Thank you, Ahmed. Yeah, welcome. To, Thank you so much. Yeah. Back to Ahmed. Yeah, okay. It's important for you to build new forms of engagement in order to stay communicated and engaged. Mentally and physically, during the pandemic, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor for me to invite Mr. Ahmed Khalil Yaqubi to talk about students' resistance amidst global pandemic. Mr. Yaqubi, please do. Mr. Ahmed Khalil Yaqubi, are you there? Ah, thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaikum salam. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let me share okay. my. Uh, first of all, um, before I start my presentation, I would like to thank uh, from the Universitas Panchasikta Tigal for providing such a great opportunity uh, for providing such a great event that uh, we will have a short uh, introduction and also a short information about the international admits resilience, international student ad, uh, resilience admits global pandemic. So if we have a little bit general information about the pandemic uh, that is simply we face in uh, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic is drastically changing the lives of people, including the lives of young people. Schools and universities have closed, exams and events postponed, uh, the usual health information services are limited. Uh, socializing with friends and widely family uh, is highly discouraged. In some places, even punishable. Uh, living in these uh, circumstances can be tough for young people for their social, physical, and mental well-being. Uh, this uh, new COVID-19 Youth Guide is a collection of information, link, and resources that can support uh, young people to navigate their lives in this uh, challenging time, as well as inspire them uh, to become leaders in dealing with the uncertainty of uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So now if we come to the resilience and we have a, a general information about, so resilience can help us uh, get through and overcome hardship. But resilience is not something uh, we are born with. It's built over time as the experiences uh, we have interact with our unique individual genetic makeup. That's why we all respond to stress and drastically like that uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic differently. Uh, things, uh, of resilience at the seesaw or balance scale, we are negative experience tip uh, the scale toward bad outcomes and positive experiences uh, tip it uh, toward good outcomes. Uh, for some people during COVID-19 outbreak, the results uh, scale can look like as we can see in the figure. So the point um, where the scale balance is called the fulcrum. Uh, and it's more to one side, as we can see in the figure uh, from the another side, it can make it harder or easier to tip the resilience scale to the positive 
everyone's for chloramines and a different spot as we mentioned before, uh, which explains why each person is different and how easily we can counterbalance hardship in life. Uh, the good news is that the perchlorin can be moved by developing a toolkit of skills you can use to adapt and find solutions. Uh, so what can we do? Uh, uh, build up and strengthen resilience right now during the uh, COVID-19 outbreak and how we can build resilience to uh, plan ahead for future times of crisis. Uh, so for the solution, the scientists of child development point to three ways we can um, affect experiences in the balance of the uh, resilience scale that we would like to explain one by one of them. Uh, the first one uh, is unload the negative scale. Uh, we can listen, uh, we can lighten the load of the negative side of the resilience scale by reducing source of stress for families and program staff, like many organizations are already doing this and uh, can draw on their experience to prepare for possible future period of physical distancing and shutdown. And also reducing sources of stress may include that. We would like to uh, mention some of them here. Uh, like uh, helping families meet basic needs like food, shelter, healthcare, childcare, and also uh, internet access or uh, connecting them with programs that can help. And also guiding adults who are out of work through applying uh, for financial assistance. The third one, creating and providing children's activity kits uh, that include things like color and box and some others that we can mention were uh, search puzzle box. Uh, craft supplies, etc., to give uh, parents and uh, caregivers a break, even for a few minutes uh, at a time, encouraging parents, program staff, and co workers to practice self care, even if it's just take a few minutes to themselves. Going for a walk or getting uh, plenty of rest, make sure staff uh, are aware of and taking advantage of employee benefits, such as employee assistance program, mental health, counseling, and paid time off. So the second one that we would like to uh, have a, a discussion about is a lot of the positive side. So we can add some uh, positive side of the resilience scale by filling on positive experiences, especially through uh, responsive relationship. Uh, the one thing that the most children who develop resilience have in common is a stable, committed relationship with the supportive parents, caregivers, or other adults. Adults uh, need this uh, perspective relationship too that we have here in these slides. Uh, if you work with families, you are likely already found in new ways to check in with them while in person visit or, or in possible with phone calls or video chats. For example, uh, the limitation of these alternative uh, may be a little uh, frustrating, thing. Uh, but remember that uh, you are just checking in. You are also providing parents with time to uh, engage in a responsive relationship with a trusted adult during a time of physical isolation. Uh, the second one that uh, is my time and encourage, encourage connections with families and friends, even though uh, we are all required to maintain physical distance. Uh, it's important to call, video chat, email, or write letters to the people we care about to engage in a response responsive interactions, protect our emotional well-being and manage the stress of living through this challenging time. Uh, the last one, children developing uh, doesn't push during a crisis in supporting the development uh, and building resilience uh, doesn't have to take a lot of extra time or effort, but uh, in fourth service. So the, now we come to the third one uh, that move to the fulcrum. So uh, we can make it easier for a skill to tip toward positive outcome by strengthening core skill. All of us uh, need executive function and self-regulation skill to manage daily life, but uh, stress make it more difficult to us. Um, the skills we have during the pand uh, pandemic, uh, we need uh, those core skills for things like planning less frequent um, tips, to the grocery store or market, filling out uh, forums for relief funds or loans, uh, 
navigation support program and for managing work, home and caring for children, adults. And also we can mention um, strengthening these skills uh, with small but helpful support, like uh, we have some of them here, uh, sending or sign up for a text uh, reminders or important appointments and also using tools such as grocery list apps, menu planning and daily uh, schedules and also creating step-by-step -step, uh, checklist for increasing relief funds and uh, filling out important applications. So during a crisis like COVID-19 outbreak, families need uh, their immediate basic needs uh, meet before they can fo focus on anything else. But when the crisis is over, longer term program that support adults and children in building and practicing, their core skill will uh, again uh, be necessary and effective. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ahmad Khalil Yakubi, for your excellent presentation. We are greatly honored to have you here. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Ahmed, back to you. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Yakubi, for your presentation. We are very happy to meet you today. Thank you so much, Mr. Yakubi. Okay. Egypt. Egypt was the first country for all over the world. All cultures learn it from it. So today we have the opportunity to talk about Egyptian culture with Mrs. Hem Sudki. Mrs. Hem, Mrs. Hem, please do. Ms. Hem. Ms. Hem. Ms. Hem. Wait, Ms. Hem, are you here? I go. I go. Well, I, I think she's here. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Operator. Ah, thank you. Okay. Hello, Emma. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Yeah. Okay. Hi, guys. How are you? Everything okay? Okay, let's start to know some information about the culture of Egypt. Egypt has that thousands of years of the recorded history, ancient Egypt was one of the first civilizations in the Middle East and Africa. For thousands of years, Egypt has maintained of a unique, complex, accessibility culture that influences literary culture in orbit of the Pharaonic area. Egypt itself has become under the influence of the Hellenic civilization for, uh, for a period of time and then later on it was affected by the culture. Egypt is multicultural, uh, multicultural uh, which uh, represented the perfect vision, uh, vision between different cultures. The culture and the transaction of Egypt are like melting pot of multi culture and transaction that have, that have created that have created a wonder image and ministry that adopt new and advanced idea to create a library at school. Okay, enough sustenance and um, a lot of talk. Uh, let's watch a short video about the beauty of Egypt, its kind of people and, and some attractive of area. Sometimes. We will sell the screen to uh, Han, don't worry. Um, you got, can you help me? You cheer yes, 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 yes. Just a moment, just a moment. We are, we are, we are trying to sell the screen. Hold a second, okay? Wait a moment, wait a moment. Can I help you? Yeah, no, no, share screen. <laughs> Wait a moment. The screen hand. Can you see the screen? Yeah, bu, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sudah, bu. Okay. Video, you got. 
Which part? Which part? Tell the video, which... the video, the video. The video. Uh, next, next, yeah. Next, next, next. Uh, PowerPoint number two, I think. Page number two, slide number two. Slide number two. Yes, this. Yes, Mrs. Sandy, please. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, continue. And uh, let's see how long the language. Sorry. After we saw the beauty of the Egyptian and the spirit of its people, let's see how the long uh, the long the language was old and now. First, the Arabic language is the official language of Egypt and it come to Egypt in the Spence's country AD and the Egyptian dialect today is the modern discard of the country among the many among the many uh, varieties of the Arabic language the Egyptian dialect is the second most widely spoken due to the inflation of the Egyptian and uh, media so uh, out of the Arab world. Because you are bored, bored with a lot of words, let me show you are the different world and now in terms of language. Uh, in this, uh, the first picture, in the past, uh, they used this letter and the shape to know how to write the name of boy and a girl for symptoms. Um, you get, uh, can you... Um, Turn the um, PowerPoint. Next slide, please, Bo. Next slide, next slide. Okay. Okay. The second picture is the Arabic language. Now, how can is the language develop? It is easy because we know how to write in it. Come one, let's talk about the uh, music. Egyptian music is the rich plant of the uh, Ingidais. Uh, the ancient Egyptian played a gestures and thoughts as well as uh, two local instruments, the flounce and the lute. The second, you go. Next book. Yes, this. Okay. Egyptian. Egyptian fashion was practic practical and simple and for most of the clothing worn by worn was worn by women. The next is Ahmed Awyuga. I have no message. Next is Bo. Next is Tani. Next is Ayn. Again. Yeah, next is okay. Again, 
Ahmed Ayam in, in, in Egyptian fashion. Yeah, in Expo, mm -hmm. I think. Again. <laughs> Next? Yeah, I think here. Yes. Here? Yes, okay. Yes. Uh, in this picture, uh, we uh, chose a different uh, clothes uh, in the picture, uh, in the Egyptian ancient, and uh, no. But this everything in the short, I hope it was a last speaker, and thank you for hearing me. How I'm finished. Yeah, uh, Boo, she has finished? Yeah. Boo? Thank you so much, Han. Very nice presentation. So we know uh, uh, Egypt culture. Thank you so much. You don't sleep yet. Blom tidur nih ya. You have not slept yet. Blom tidur, Han. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, Bapak Ibu, ini kenapa? Thank you so much. Okay, continue, Bu. Right. <laughs> yeah, Bu, hello. Bu. Uh, we try to, to hold the second, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, now we are back. Amen. Okay. Well, Bapak, Ibu, ladies and gentlemen, adik-adik mahasiswa, no time for question and answer session. Ahmed will lead the question and answer session. Ahmed, you want to say something for question and answer? There will be three persons. Ahmed, you see the chat yeah. box? You see the chat box? Yeah, I want to check the chat box. Okay. I want to okay. open the phone. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ada, sudah yeah. ada. Sudah ada satu di sana. Coba siapa dipanggil, Ahmed? Dipanggil. Yeah, okay. Oh. I will check the book. Uh, okay, do it. Right. Mm -hmm. so, ada, so, ada dua. Ada dua. Can you start my first question, boy? And I will uh, the next, okay? The chat, the, the chat box, Ahmed. You can see in the chat box. Yeah, yeah, there I, are I, two. I know, I know, but... There are two. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, but I wanted to enter the first camera. on my phone. Ahmed, to see camera. Okay. There are yeah, two okay. Yeah, I wanted to open the phone. phone. Okay, but wait. Yeah. Wait, I will make you more. Yeah. yeah, that is Felicia. Felicia. Felicia from Universitas Ibet, Semarang. Dan juga dari Kadiri. Ahmed, you have to check quickly, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, Felicia. Felicia, your time, please. Please do. Uh, Felicia. Felicia tidak kelihatan mukanya ya, mohon maaf, uh, kameranya di ini. Nah, gitu kelihatan cantiknya. Oke, okay. thank you. <laughs> Itu so beautiful, Felicia. Oke, okay. please silahkan. Ya, silahkan bertanya untuk siapa disampaikan. Uh, kurang kedengaran, kurang kedengaran. Mungkin uh, 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 mikrofonnya terlalu jauh, Mbak Felicia. Ya. Uh, my name is Felicia Karten. Uh, the major is economic education, semester 4, University <coughs> Semarang. And I have a question for Miss Anita. Miss Anita, is Miss Anita here? Miss Anita, are you here? I'm here. Oh, great. This is the questions for you. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, please. I will bring the topic of uh, cultural shock. And how do you deal with your culture? As we know, it's hard for adapt to a new environment, especially the different cultures. Thank you, Miss Anita. Miss Anita, please answer. Okay, yeah, yeah sure. Sorry, there was uh, some problems with connection. I didn't hear the beginning of the question. Uh, how how did how did I adapt for the for the new country, yeah, right. How to deal with your culture? Uh, 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 I think that uh, at that at that time I was prepared psychologically. I was uh, I was sure that I uh, this, this is just a hard time and they need to overcome it, and especially my friends. 
uh, helped me a lot because uh, there was a special community for the students, and we talked a lot and we shared our, shared our emotions and our feelings, and that was really, really, very helpful. And um, the connection with my family that was really good too. Of course, there were some problems, but I, I cannot say that uh, it was too hard. That was okay. I think that that was just normal. Of course, there were some people who uh, came back home. That I think that's okay too. Uh, maybe before going abroad, we need to prepare. We need to read about that. We need to talk about. It. We need to talk with people who already were there. That that will be nice. Are you abroad now? Do you get the point? But Felicia, do you get the point? I get the point, Miss. Thank you. Okay, thank okay, you. I wish, I, yeah. know, I wish you hope a bit and uh, that will be okay. You, you were a beautiful bit, true. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Anita, for the question. Uh, for, sorry for the answer. We have <coughs> David from David Fajar from Kadiri University. Uh, to, uh, he also like to ask Miss Anita. David, hello, David. David, David Fajar dari Kadiri. <coughs> Operator, please. Ah, oh, here is David. He looks so handsome. Okay. Okay. Just tell to Miss Anita for your questions. Silakan. Uh, masih off, masih unmute. Uh, kayaknya belum kedengeran deh, Mas David. Coba di. Belum kedengeran tuh. Sudah. Uh, tapi belum 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 kedengeran suaranya. Coba. Uh, mikrofonnya ya Kedeng belum kedengaran Mas David Fajar coba nggak usah pakai headset bisa nggak barangkali kalau nggak pakai headset itu bisa jadi dicabut dulu eh dicabut dulu nggak kedengaran iya nggak kedengaran kenapa ya suaranya nggak kedengaran tuh yang dipandangi wajahnya siapa? Halo. Mas Fajar ya bisa bapak bisa sekarang kedengaran sekarang kedengaran. Mas Fajar dari Kadiri sekarang kedengaran. Ya. Sekarang. Ini. Ya. Halo. Gimana? Ya. Ya. Oh itu bisa. Ya. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay. yeah. yes. Halo, halo. Can you hear me? Yes. Very good. Yeah, very good. Oke, okay. thank you. Uh, sorry for the technical problems. Oke, okay. I would like to ask to Miss Anita. Uh, recently, I am learning the basic Korean during this pandemic, and I am having some troubles to remembering the vocabularies. Uh, based on your experiences, do you have any suggestions? Uh, what should I do uh, to to solve the problem I'm facing? Thank you. Okay, okay. May I ask you what exa what exactly what exactly what problems are you facing right now? Uh, is it language problems or some cultural problems with uh, talking to other people or what? Uh, the language problems, especially the voc vocabularies. Uh, as we know, there are a lot of, you know, words in Korean that similarly su have uh, same sounds. Mm -hmm. nah. yeah. mm -hmm. okay. when, I, when I studied Chinese in my time, I used to write down the words till I, till I remember that. It's very old and... Uh, um, very good system to remember words because it was based on characters and when you see the character you need to uh, look uh, what part what part does it in, uh, include so uh, you also there is a very, very good way of association, association 
Yeah. Look at the word. You listen to it till you uh, till you remember it well, and then you try to figure out the association with it, with this word. What first comes to your mind? I think that uh, all the people who um, try to learn languages uh, used this uh, way, right? This is a very good one. And don't, don't be afraid to talk even if you are not sure that you are talking that you are saying things right. Uh, just go out and speak. speak uh, no matter what, no matter how grammar is, uh, are you sure in it or not? Uh, just do that and do more practice, and then study it. That that will help. And there are no magical pill, unfortunately, but I hope that you help with that. I'm sure that you'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Okay, thank you for your question. Okay, thank you, Miss Anita. Ahmed, your turn. Ahmed, you yeah, may. Yeah, wait. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Just ask them to raise hand, Ahmed, and and ask them to to yeah, okay. uh, to. If some speak. if someone has a, yeah okay, well, if someone has a question, please raise hand. Okay. Wait, Bo, wait, wait, wait. Bo, can you take the first question or hand question, please? Okay, Bo. The second question only, okay. You can take it, okay? The second question. Okay, let me lead the question and answer session. I seem I have still have the problems. Okay. Uh, Bahrul Ulum from? Hello, from Hello. Kadiri University. Okay, Pak Mas Bahrul Ulum. Yes. Okay, to whom is your question? Uh, so I have question for uh, Miss Anita from Moscow University. So, uh, my question is: What are the most effective methodologies you found for development global learning, especially in this pandemic? Thank you. Miss Anita, your turn to answer the question. The question goes to you. What is uh, what is the way to 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 learn languages, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, right now, we are facing really mm, hard times. We cannot go abroad, and uh, we cannot go to Asia, unfortunately. Uh, but still, we need to learn languages, and there are a lot of problems. But um, I think that the best help. The best helper here is the internet, maybe, because uh, due to the internet, we may find a lot of resources or uh, people to talk. And um, the internet, this is maybe the one um, base that could help. Mm. So uh, that depends on the details of the, your situation. Maybe say more about that. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Anita. I get it. What you explained last time. So thank you. Okay. Okay. The next, the next one, uh, Mr. Risky. Mm -hmm. Which are uh, which one? Mr. Risky, which one? Where are you from? Mr. Risky, hello. Mr. Risky, dari mana? Dari mana Ahmed? Seriskinya? Tidak tahu. <laughs> Jalannya hati-hati nyenggol kamera ya. Iya. Oke, Pak Rizki Halo. Uh, masih an oke. Okay. Halo. Ya, Mr. Rizki di sini. Mr. Ahmed yeah, uh, hello. Universal yeah. All right. Can I ask, uh, can I ask uh, Mr. Dr. Dennis? Can I ask Dr. Dennis? 
Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. The topic yes, is yes. very interesting since uh, it talks about educational educational matters. The the thing is, I was wondering uh, about the citation style because we know there are a lot of citation style um, that uh, that serve as cadence in writing the journals. So. Uh, in your opinion, or I mean, in based on your experience, which citation style should we follow? Okay, okay. Uh, okay, well, regarding the citations. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, regarding the citations and references of the any previous uh, articles, you should always follow. Uh, what uh, is the journal requirement? Suppose if you are submitting your article to any uh, journal, okay, you should go to its guidelines, what guidelines time? to the author, and there you will find that what format basically you need to follow. For example, they are asking you for APA, they they are asking you for MLA, they are asking you for Chicago manual. So there are different citation style, and you should always follow what the journal is asking suppose if uh, uh, my journal if you talk about my journal okay the south asian journal of social sciences and humanities we ask for apa sixth edition references so in order to be accurate with your uh, citation style you should always go to the citations website references website for example for apa you can go to apa uh, reference guideline from there you can see the exact format. Sometimes Google Scholar also give you, you know, exact, uh, uh, you know, citations for APA, for MLA. Uh, but sometimes they, you know, they miss a few things. Maybe they sometimes miss page numbers. Sometimes they miss, uh, miss issues or, you know. Uh, so that's why you need to focus uh, on what journal is asking. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Dennis. Thank you, thank you. Yes, and I guess, thank you so much, Dr. Danish. The next one, Wahyu, Krista. Uh, Krista. Silakan, Wahyu, Krista. Hello. Hello. Okay. Wahyu. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. okay, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I am Wai Prisayuni from Pajasakti University. Uh, I'd like to miss Anita. Uh, you say that you got culture shock when you studied in China. Sorry. So, uh, is there any, I mean, maybe you find uh, the difference between uh, China's, Chinese school and Russian school. Uh, I'd like to ask you uh, how's the education system in Russia, like the schedule and culture in the Russian school? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your question. That's a very interesting point, by the way. Of course, uh, the cultural difference between Russian people and Chinese people is quite, quite big. And we had to understand a lot of things uh, to us. We, need to, we had to face it. But Mm. Uh, what about schools in Russia? We, mm, I think that systems are more or less similar because we, uh, after graduating from school, we have to pass exams and go to the university as well as in China. And I think that uh, the same system works all over the world. And in university, we've got a lot of theory, uh, theory lessons. Uh, and the same is in China. Maybe the difference is in attitude, because in China, all of the students are too hardworking. And if you, uh, if you ever met any Chinese students, maybe you understand that because they work too hard. Uh, Russian people um, um, prefer practice than studying. And uh, we are more maybe talkative and uh, as I, as I, 
okay, uh, my experience is based on the my group mates, okay, the, the that picture that I saw all these years in my university, and uh, they, uh, of course, cultural shock is normal. It's normal not only for China, but for every country. If you go abroad, of course, you face it, and uh, there are nothing bad in that because this is just ages of adaptation. Um, and cultural differences are not so obvious because uh, uh, Chinese people understand that uh, they are talking to Western people, so they are prepared and uh, they try to behave in the way you do. So uh, I think that uh, the product, the, the result of the 21st century, because we all, all, all over the world foreigners try to adapt their behavior uh, to uh, the speaker. So uh, if, uh, uh, was it clear? If you if you want, if you want to um, come to Russia, party, uh, just welcome. I I am sure that you like it because Russian people are very warm and uh, we love foreigners so much. And we're always ready to help. Thank you so much, Miss Anita, for the answer. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, how about uh? For, sorry, I I have one question more. Uh, how about uh the schedule like in in China? Uh, they study from uh, 8 a.m. to to evening. Like you have, uh, I, yeah. I saw your PowerPoint. How about in Russia? Do you have like that? I mean, like from 8 a.m. to 9 and and uh, break for uh, at 12 p.m. to uh, 50 p.m. or something like that. Okay, okay, yeah, I got this question. Okay, that depends on the major, because, for example, in medical universities, uh, students uh, study all day. Like, they they have classes in the first part of the day and then in the evening again. Um, in my faculty, philology, right, in English and Chinese studies, we start, we have uh, four or five classes per day. That is not too much. And uh, the, the point is that we have to study again after classes by ourselves. Um, but uh, the university doesn't force you to study uh, hard and hard. That uh, the result is um, priority. Not the way you study, not the time you spend, uh, but the result. If you, uh, um, if you learn, very good something uh, that's already important and it doesn't matter how much how much time uh, have you spent this for foreign students uh, who came from other countries to russia uh, there are less classes per day because we understand that we need to um, min minimize the stress so i think that's quite logical thank you Thank you so much, Ms. Anita. Thank you so much uh, for the question. Thank you, Krista and Ms. Anita for the answers. We will call the last question from Meli. Ahmed, can you call Meli, Ahmed? Yeah, yeah, Thank okay, you. please, Mrs. Meli. Uh, Mrs. Meli, yes. what? Ms. Meli, what? Uh, what do you, do you know? Mrs. The answer, Meli, the, 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 the question has been answered in the chat box. Bye. By Miss Anita. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, finally, we have come to the end of the agenda. Tadi sudah dijawab ya, Mbak Meli ya di di apa namanya di chat box sudah dijawab oleh Miss Anita. So, Ahmed, we have come to the end of the agenda, Bapak Ibu. Uh, Bapak Ibu perhatikan di box di chat box ada link questionnaire. Di sana ada feedback yang harus adik-adik dan Bapak Ibu tulis sehingga nanti uh, the e certificate will go directly to your email. Tapi syaratnya harus ngisi dulu ke feedback dari questionnaire dari uh, sorry. I mean the questionnaire is the feedback. Questioning itu adalah feedback untuk ke acara ini. Jadi adik-adik mahasiswa, Bapak Ibu sekalian, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to have if you like to have a e certificate, please fill out the feedback.
Jadi mau nggak mau harus isi feedback sebagai presensi nanti sertifikatnya langsung ke email Bapak Ibu. Tapi karena ini ini biasanya 100 per email ya, maksudnya 100 email hari ini mungkin hanya 100 sertifikat bisa terkirim, besoknya lagi ada 100 ya, lagi ya, dan ya. dan seterusnya seperti itu. Jadi tidak proses dalam satu hari 300 sertifikat tidak bisa ya jadi kapasitasnya adalah 100 sertifikat per hari jadi bapak ibu dan adik-adik silahkan isi feedbacknya di kolom chat itu sudah terlihat sudah terlihat gi bapak ibu sudah terlihat di chat box oke okay. and you can check over there and fill out kalau mau dapat sertifikat ya harus fill out namanya nama dan gelar harus sesuai gi bapak ibu juga adik-adik sekalian so kindly fill out the questionnaire or the feedback for our joint international summer camp today Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to express, no, I mean on behalf of Universitas Panca Sakti Tegal, we would like to express our deepest uh, sincere gratitude to all university partners. Di sini ada uh, Ibu Vita dari Kadiri. Ibu Vita, are you still here? Halo Ibu Halo, Vita. Halo, ya. Yeah, uh, di, ditunjukkan Bu, Bu Vita. Vita, Bu Vita dari Kadiri. Ya, yeah, I'm here. Wait a moment, we would like. Oke, okay. Bu Vita, oke. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Terima kasih banyak, Bu. Sudah join International okay. Summer Camp today. Thank Semoga you for sehat the chance. Oke. Okay. Nah, jadi, Bapak Ibu, Ibu Vita is the head of the International Affairs of Universitas Kadiri East Java. I would like to say uh, my deepest gratitude also to Ibu Dr. Lulu. Uh, Ibu Dr. Lulu, are you still here? Yes, I'm still here. Yeah. Uyoka. Yeah, okay. Here is Ibu Dr. Lulu. Thank you yes. so much. Ibu Dr. Lulu mm, ini Dr. Mm -hmm. yeah, Ibu yeah, Dr. Yeah. Lulu ini Vice Rector of Academic Affairs of Universitas Ivet Semarang. Beliau okay. ini orangnya low profile hmm? sama dengan Bu Vita ya, very low profile oh, and smile. they are very they are very excellent, very beautiful also and very quickly in response in respond to the, the the event. Thank you so much, Bu Lulu, okay. Bu Vita. Thank you, Yoga, maybe. Anytime. Okay. Ahmed, Anita, please yeah. come in event university. Okay. Join, join, join. Okay. And I would like to... <laughs> Thank you so much, Ibu Lili. Yeah. And I would like to express my deepest gratitude to Universitas, um, sorry, STIE Widya Gama Lumajang, Pak Hudi atau yang mewakili? Pak Hudi? Pak Hudi atau yang mewakili? Apakah uh, dari STIE Widya Gama Lumajang ada, masih ada? Halo. STIA Widya Gama Lumajang ini uh, sudah menjadi uh, Universitas Partner UPS Tegal untuk join International Summer Camp. Jadi kami biasa untuk join International Summer Camp berdua, biasanya offline. Maksud kami uh, uh, berdua di sini, maksudnya Universitas UPS Tegal dan uh, apa, STIA Widya Gama Lumajang yang offline dulu. Kita bawa mahasiswa asing dari UPS Tegal ke Uh, Widya Gama Lumajang di sana tiga hari lalu uh, exploring cultural cultural apa heritage of Indonesia in ya, Lumajang and they, that that was very amazing ada nggak ya dari STI Widya Gama Lumajang mungkin sudah ya, ya. ya perwakilannya ya Pak Udi Pak Udi Pak Udi halo Oper, aha, ya, ini operator ini apa? Yang ada kerjaan. Oh, dengan ini kan Bapak okay. siapa nggih? Rafni. Pak Rafni, coba Pak Rafni. Pak Rafni dimunculkan PIC. dulu. PIC. PIC. Maaf, tidak bisa menyalakan. Uh, oh iya, <laughs> gitu ya. <laughs> oh ya sudah, <laughs> tidak apa-apa. J, terima kasih nggih Pak uh, sampaikan ke Pak Hudi juga Ibu Direktur Bu Ratna, Bu Dr. Ratna. Uh, UPS sangat berterima kasih hari ini. Terima kasih sekali untuk Adri Indonesia. 
yang menjadi co-host ya menjadi facilitator Pak Dr. Fatoni Rodli meskipun beliau tidak ada di sini juga Ketua Adri Jateng uh, Pak Dr. Taufik Pulo terima kasih banyak telah banyak memfasilitasi universitas-universitas swasta di Jawa Tengah dan mungkin hampir seluruh Indonesia ya Kak uh, untuk uh, penyelenggaraan event-event internasional seperti ini and I would like to express my deepest sincere gratitude also to all the honorable speakers here Dr. Juri Ardiantoro mungkin beliau sudah tidak ada karena sebagai deputi empat presiden uh, untuk political and communications beliau sangat sibuk hari ini harusnya ada briefing dengan presiden di istana tapi beliau masih menyempatkan diri untuk hadir hari ini kemudian I would like to thank you so much for Mr. Yosef Bakil beliau juga sudah izin karena harus uh, he has to work at 7 uh, a.m. in the morning and that dia, beliau juga belum tidur he has not slept yet like other speakers here and Dr. Dennis Suleman thank you so much uh, you have not slept yet I know you you be very tired I know you are very tired you look so great today your, your performance uh, your presentation is nice thank you for joining us today thank you so much okay I would like to express my deepest sincere gratitude to Mr. Ahmad Khalil Yakubi the speaker yeah he has been helping me for connecting to the Afghan univer Afghanistan University and also Mr. Ahmad Halil Yakubi this is the second time for him to join the international summer camp masih ada di sini Pak Ahmad Yakubi Yeah I'm here I'm here oh, Yeah thank yeah. you thank you so much yeah, My pleasure uh, thank you and I would like to express my deepest sincere gratitude to Miss Anita Miss Anita, hello, Miss Anita. Thank you. You have not slept yet, like others. You have not slept. Oh. Adrenaline. Okay, I'm. I'm really sorry because of the time differences. Yeah, time differences, four hours difference. Yeah, karena perbedaan waktu bapak ibu jadi para speakers ini rata-rata belum tidur. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for today. Uh, it's very. It's 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 a great honor for us. Uh, to have you here and i would like to say thank you to han han is here han not sure han, are you there <laughs> Olivia. Sure. okay okay tell, tell han okay tell han and i would yeah, like okay. to to express my sincere gratitude to the moderator today uh ahmed thank you hello thank ahmed you. he is the student <laughs> hello, hello. of universitas pancasak tegal yeah Uh, yeah, thank you so much. You look so great today, Ahmed. You know, we are happy so to be too. to have you as the moderator. Yeah, thank you so Actually, much. I'm very happy to be with you. Thank you so much. Really. Okay, Ade-Ade bisa langsung chat chatan sama Ahmed ya. Nanti nomor teleponnya bisa dibagi di chat box. <laughs> Ahmed, <laughs> is, nice. Ahmed is single. <laughs> okay, okay, oh, okay. Mr. Ahmed is single. Yeah, yeah. Okay, nanti bisa di di chat beliaunya. Okay, thank you so much, I Bapak Ibu, ladies and gentlemen. You. Thank you so much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let's say hamdalah together. Alhamdulillahirobbilalamin. Alhamdulillahirobbilalamin. Oh ya, yeah, take a picture. Before yeah. we leave, take a picture, please. Take a picture. Jadi dia babai dong. Udah sih. Udah. Oke okay, sudah ya. Sudah semua. Oh sudah, oh, sudah semua. Yeah, Oke. Okay, okay. Terima kasih. Thank you, Ahmad. Thank, Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Terima kasih banyak adik-adik. Bye. Bye. Terima kasih. Thank you so much for today. Thank you, Miss Yuka. Ya, sami-sami. Monggo, silahkan.